A lot of moms hate the idea of a schedule. They think that if they had one, it would take away all of their freedom and flexibility. Now, I completely understand wanting to have the freedom to do things spontaneously. Both my husband and I have serious FOMO, and we typically have some sort of plans on every day of the weekend, and if we get a last minute invitation to something else, we will typically sit down and see if we can squeeze it in. Now, sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't, depending on what we have going on, but we have actually done two Thanksgivings in one day before, just a few hours apart, because we were invited to two, and we wanted to go to both of them. But even with that love of being able to do whatever we want whenever we want to, I have found for myself as a mom that when I have good routines that make up the framework and the foundation for the day, my life doesn't feel chaotic or stressful, and it still allows for spontaneity. So today we are going to talk about the five routines that you should add into your day if you would like to make your life easier. If you're new here, I'm Cassie with makingtimeforgiggles.com and I make videos all about how to streamline your home so you can spend time on things that matter. If that sounds like something you would enjoy, please subscribe down below and ring the bell next to it so you can be notified when the next video comes out. So like I mentioned already, in this video, we will get into the routines that will be creating a structure for your day. And in another video, I will show you the foundational routines for your entire week. One other quick thing before we jump into this, these are the routines that we do on a daily basis during the regular work week. So Monday through Friday, this is how we structure our days. Like I alluded to previously, our weekdays are very different than our weekends, but having a good structure to the weekdays makes things seem less chaotic when there is that flexibility on the weekends. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first routine that I recommend you have is a daily block schedule. And I really like the block schedule because it kind of gives you a guideline to go by as you're going through your day without it being too strict and rigid. So with a block schedule, you have blocks that you do certain types of activities in and every single day isn't going to be the same, but the types of activities that would go in each block will stay consistent from day to day. So for example, in this block schedule, there is a block called get out of the house. And in that block are things like play in the backyard, go on a hike, go to the park, doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, music lessons, and play dates. So you can see that all of these things are not going to happen every single day, but when you want to schedule any one of these activities, it would go in this block. So it really takes the guesswork out of when to schedule appointments, when to do different things during your week, and it just gives you that overall structure for your day. I have an entire video for how to set up your block schedule, and I will link that in the cards and in the description down below if you would like to check that out. The second routine that will make your life easier is a laundry routine. And the reason that we want to do this routine second is because you want to use your block schedule to create that routine. So when you are creating your laundry routine, it can be a good idea to look over the blocks and see where it makes the most sense to put in these steps of the laundry routine. If you work out of the house all day, it is not a good idea to have your laundry sitting in the washer from morning until evening because the laundry won't smell very good anymore and you will have to rewash it again. So if you want to do your laundry in the morning, you can get up early, start it before breakfast, and then switch it before you leave the house. Then you can fold the laundry as soon as you get home. It will be a little wrinkly, but at least it will still get done. Another option would be to start the laundry as soon as you get home from work, then switch it after dinner and fold the laundry after the kids go to bed. So in this block schedule, again, this is an example, I have start the laundry in the morning block. Then in the get out of the house block, I have switch the laundry either before you leave or right after you get back. Then in the evening block, I have fold the laundry. And having a preset time of day when you will do each of these laundry activities keeps the laundry from getting stuck in any one part of the process. I also like to take my weekly cleaning routine and write down with all of the other cleaning, which block the washing is happening in, the drying is happening and the folding. Because sometimes when we are creating our cleaning routines, we don't remember that we're also doing laundry most days and we can easily overwhelm ourselves if we aren't taking that into account. 
So I also have some videos about how to set up your laundry routine. And also I have a video about all of my laundry tips. So I will link those in the cards and in the description down below if you want any more help with laundry. The next routine that you want to have is a kitchen cleaning routine. And you want to take this block schedule again, and I've been calling this an example block schedule, but this was actually my block schedule for quite a while. I have since updated it just as my kids have gotten older, but this was the schedule that I used for quite a while and it worked very well for us. So you want to take this block schedule and any time that you see a meal in the block schedule, so in this one it would be the morning block, eat breakfast, I also wrote down clean up after breakfast. And I think it's important to do that because if you don't, it's really easy to pack your schedule so full that you never have time to clean your kitchen. And when you don't have time to clean your kitchen, you end up with a mountain of dishes at the end of the day, at least. That used to be what happened to me every day before I came up with this routine. So write down in that block schedule, clean up, breakfast or lunch or dinner or snacks or anytime you see a meal on your block schedule. Then the next part of creating a kitchen cleaning routine is coming up with the steps that you would like yourself and everyone to take every time you are cleaning the kitchen. And sitting down and figuring this out will really help your kitchen get cleaned in the most efficient way possible. It's really easy when we don't think about how we are cleaning our kitchen to do a lot of double work and to start something and then get distracted and start something else. And before we know it, it's taken us twice as long as it would have if we had just stuck with each task and done them all in turn. So I created this document here to show the most efficient way to clean our kitchen. And yours may be slightly different than this, but this is just what I have. The first is to clean as you cook because it is always easier to put things away right away than it is to have a huge mess at the end of a meal. The second is to clean up everything else right after the meal is over. It takes so much longer if you wait until the end of the day to clean up all of your dishes than it does to just clean up breakfast after breakfast, clean up lunch once lunch is done, and clean up dinner after dinner. The third thing is to put all of the leftovers and condiments away so everything that goes in the refrigerator gets dealt with first. Then for us, the next step is to tackle the table and that means completely clearing it, taking everything that needs to be at the sink to the sink, putting anything in the garbage that needs to be in the garbage and wiping the table completely down. After that is cleaning all of the counters, working toward the sink. Then after all of the surfaces have been cleaned, you want to do the dishes. If you start doing the dishes sooner than this, then you will end up having to do the dishes and then do more dishes and then do more dishes. And I always hated it when I was doing the dishes and then I would turn around and realize that I didn't have all the dishes. I would think I was almost done and then I wasn't. So I personally find it much less frustrating to just wait until all of the other surfaces are completely cleaned and then start doing the dishes. And once the dishes are done, then it is time to sweep the floors. And the last step that I have on here is get everyone involved because sometimes when you're starting a new routine, it's much easier to figure out the routine by yourself and really get the routine solidified in your mind and then teach your spouse or your kids or whomever else how to clean the kitchen along with you. The fourth routine that will make your life a lot easier is having a morning routine. Now the morning routines for us is basically all of the things that take place during our morning block. And for my kids with their morning routine, that includes their chores. For me, it includes my cleaning chore for the day. It includes making our beds. It includes getting dressed. It just takes all of those little pieces and puts them into a routine that then becomes a habit. So for my kids, doing their morning chores is just a part of getting up every day. It isn't something that I have to nag them about. It's just a part of their morning habit. Now I forgot to grab their morning and evening checklists out of their room before they went to bed, but I will put here on the screen what those checklists look like. So you can either create your own, or if you want something that looks similar, I have all of the templates that I'm showing you in this video in my autopilot workbook. And I will link that in the description down below if you want to check that out. I also think it's really good to have a morning routine for yourself. Something that just gets you ready for the day and helps you hit the ground running with good, effective habits. 
I need to do another video with my current morning routine on it because it has changed a lot since last time I did a video about creating a morning routine. I think that video can still be really helpful if you would like to get up a little earlier and have a morning routine before your kids get up. So I will link that in the cards and in the description down below if you want to check that out. I also have some tips for how to get up earlier if you are not naturally a morning person because I definitely am not. But I was able to do this, especially during the time when I needed to, when my kids were much smaller. But now that my oldest two are getting older and their morning routines are set, they are in a habit of doing them and it's not something where I have to sit with them and help them along the way. I don't actually get up before they do anymore. We tend to do our morning routines simultaneously. So I am excited to do that video because I think it will be a helpful one for moms who are not naturally morning people who want to still have a nice routine in the mornings. And then the last routine that will make your life a lot easier is an evening routine. Especially if you have kids, having an evening routine can really be a game changer. Our kids now know exactly all of the things that they need to do to get themselves ready for bed. And because we've incorporated that into an evening checklist, we actually don't have to micromanage each step of the way. It used to be that we would say, go get ready for bed and they would rush off and they would get their pajamas on and then they would run back. And we would say, did you brush your teeth? And they would say, oh no, I didn't. And they would run off and they would brush their teeth and then they would come back. And we would say, did you go potty? And they would say, oh no, I didn't think of that. And they would run off and they would go potty and they would come back. And every single step of the way required us to guide it and make sure it was happening. Now they have their checklists and we have put the entire thing into a routine for them. So we just say, go do your evening routine and they will go, they will look at their checklist, they will check everything off and get it all done. And then they will come when they are ready to read a story with us. So it has made our lives a lot easier. And just like with the morning routines, it can also be really helpful to have an evening routine for yourself. Now I also have some videos on how to create morning and evening checklists for your kids and for yourself. So again, I will put that in the cards and in the description down below. I feel like I've said a lot in this video that I'm putting things in the description. So be sure to check out the description because you wanna make sure that you go back and you watch all of those videos that show you how to set up each one of these routines. Now, if you would like to use the templates that I showed you in this video, you can check out the autopilot workbook. I will link that in the description down below. And if you would like to have your home running on autopilot in eight weeks or less, check out my course, put your home on autopilot, because I would love to help you out on that journey. I hope this video helped you out in creating some structure for your day while still allowing for flexibility. As always, I'm Cassie with makingtimeforgiggles.com and if you would like to see more videos about how to make your life easier, be sure to subscribe down below because I would love to see you on the next one.